Hey everybody, Jason from Meghead Studios. Today I want to talk about those Dollar General skeletons that you could get 10 of them for a dollar. That's right, 10 skeletons for a dollar. Now these things are rather large. Um, just to give you a quick comparison, this is a Reaper miniature skeletal swordsman. So you can see the size difference, really big, but still, it's a great value for your money. 10 skeletons for a dollar. 10 bucks gets you 100 skeletons. Can't beat that, right? Okay, so the issue has come up. This I even had the same issue of painting them. How the hell can you paint them? All right, so here's the thing. When they come out of the pack, now the, remember, these things are like super mass produced. Um, after a little bit of a little bit of searching, I found out that these suckers only cost about 15 cents per 10 to manufacture. So, I mean, yeah, they're making their profit on them, and these are mass-produced like you wouldn't believe, like thousands of them a day. So, I don't know why it's so hard to get them. But anyway, as you see, when they come out, straight out of the package, there's a lot of flash. They need to get cleaned up. This is what's known now as the sassy skeleton, because he, had, he or she has the hand on the hip. But yeah, so, I mean, for the value, yeah, they're good. Main problem here is how to paint them. And again, I ran into this problem myself. A lot of you have run into this problem. So let's go over the steps real quick. So the material they're made out of, the best thing I could figure out is a PVC silicone mix. They don't take paint very well straight out of the package. You do have to clean them. Uh, for example, this one in particular, I got, I want to say about three or four weeks ago. Straight out of the package, all I did was a rattle can paint, and it's still very tacky. I mean, you can see this piece of lint is just sticking on there. Still really tacky. I didn't bother trying to clean it off because, let me see if I can actually, yeah, see? It's still tacky. It's sticking straight to my hand. Yeah, I didn't bother cleaning it off because I knew eventually I'd be doing a video for it. Um, the paint sticks on, but it's super, super tacky. So if you want to keep it as like a lint monster... You know, go ahead and do that, but you probably don't. So let's just throw him on the side. So, how to clean it? There's been various methods used. Um, most commonly, excuse me. And what I did with this other one that I'm going to show you, this other sassy, was liquid dawn hot water. Still tacking. See, still sticking to my finger. Okay, so you don't want to do that. My friend, James Burrell, you may know him, or at least heard of him, seen his stuff, gave me the great idea. Right here. Get yourself a bottle of this from your dollar store. Get two or three bottles. Okay? Do not dilute it. Put your skeletons in a metal pan. Two ways you could do this. Put the skeletons in a pan, let them soak for 48 hours. You don't have to cover them entirely, although that would be preferred. But every now and again, you know, go ahead and make, turn them around, mix them so they get full coverage. Then after 48 hours, take them out, rinse them off. Whatever mold release is on these figures will be off. A better way that I found out when I got my next 100 set of skeletons would be to put them in the same pan. This is just a baking dish, one of those aluminum ones that are about this big or even bigger. You know, they're a dollar. Spend the money, it's going to be worth it, okay? <clears throat> Excuse me. Put your skeletons in there and, again, move them around over a couple days and let the uh, alcohol evaporate naturally. The paint will go on a lot better. All right, so let me give you some examples of, of paint, different painting things and what I found to be the best. You might be surprised. So my daughter, of course, she wanted a pink skeleton. Pink skeleton using apple barrel paint. I'm going to try to close, close this up a little bit. The paint application isn't that great. It looks good on camera, but I assure you there's... It's, it's not at all that great. I said it's looking good on the camera, but it's, it's not in person. 
Okay, so that's with the Apple Barrel Pink. Let's see if you can, okay, you can see right there. See on the skull a little bit. I wish my camera would pick it up. It didn't adhere very well. Um, but, going like this, I'm putting a lot of pressure on here. The paint still on there. Did not rub off at all. Okay. Scraping it. If I scrape it with my fingernail, yeah, it's going to come off, obviously. But if you're just going to rub it with your thumb, I didn't paint that side. Stains on there pretty well. So that's with that one. More sassy skeleton. This time I used the apple barrel white. Um, again, it's not showing up very well on the camera, what I would like to show you, but the paint doesn't go on quite well enough on there. Um, it's kind of thick in spots, and you can see over here, there we go. It's just really rough. But again, I'm rubbing it, and it's coming off slightly, but it stays on pretty good. Moving it. No cracking. Okay. So that's with this one. So next up, not a sassy, it's still a skeleton. For this one, I used Citadel Ceramite White. Bending, and it does start to crack as you can see. And this is the Citadel paint. A more expensive paint, it's not doing as well. After it cracks, and I'm doing the rubbing on it, and it is barely coming off, but it is coming off. Okay, now here's where the surprise came in. I'm gonna, because of the way my camera is, Rustoleum Primer. Perfect. No, I did not clean these models up because I'm using these for my kids' game. And let's face it, you're not going to win awards with these particular models. Scrape, scrape, scrape. Nothing. Bend, bend, bend. Paint has not cracked. Okay. So, yes, you can use the Sprattle can once you clean it off using the, the alcohol. This gray sucker. Alejo Ghost Gray Primer. I used an airbrush for this. Okay. Goes on fairly well, doesn't obscure the details. This was just a quick prime. I missed a couple of spots, obviously. I've got more of them somewhere, but I'm just just for the purpose of this video, just to show you. Doesn't come off. Bendy trendy. So, my recommendation, use the alcohol, let it soak, let it evaporate, don't even have to clean it up afterwards, just let that alcohol evaporate all on its own, and then you can go straight to paint. Priming was no problem with this, no problem with this, other than you need an airbrush if you don't have one. But these are not bad, but again, with the apple barrel paint, I really wish my camera could pick this up. It, it does look kind of chunky on there, and the paint does come off eventually. And once it starts coming off, it comes off. Okay, so the next step on them, you know, a lot of my kids want the classic white skeleton. So let's go over these. Now with these, next I'm going to show you, I used... Vallejo Game Inc. Meryl Brown. 
just in case you need the number. This one was with the Apple Barrel brush on paint. You can kind of tell there. Didn't come out right. This actually took quite a few coats of the Merrill Brown to sink in. It used quite a bit. Um, normally, on average, maybe three drops to my little palette. And I'll get like two or three of them done. This one uh, was about six or seven drops. Um, still picked up the detail pretty nicely. What little detail there is. As you can see on there, those aren't these aren't little spots of extra paint. These are the details that are in there. Like, I guess you can say they're, they're pit marks, pock marks, or maybe even flesh is still on there. But it picks it up pretty decently. I didn't paint these so I would know which ones are which. I mean, as far as the shield and the weapons. So this one was the apple barrel. This is the rattle can. This was one coat. As you can see, it's a lot lighter. Still picks up the details. Um, doesn't look as old. And again, doing this thing here. Still on there. Um, let me also mention that I did this inking about an hour ago. And it's staying on. It's nice. And I can see where I missed a couple spots here and there. No big deal. But yeah, it's not coming off. Okay, so this was the primer one, and this is using the Vallejo brush on surface primer. Um, again, one coat came out a lot darker, but I like it because as you can see right here on the forehead, it really did pick up that brow. Wish it would focus. It picked up the ridge line above the eye sockets. Um, and just all around, it looked a lot better. It looked kind of like maybe some flesh got stuck on there and it's sunburned. And yeah, of course, I missed some spots again. But I was in a rush. I had to go pick up the kids from school. But yeah, this is an hour ago. So one hour and these suckers are good to go. Just, just to cure. Normally, I would recommend 24 hours to allow your primer to fully cure so all the shrinkage happens and all that. But, again, I was in a rush, and I really like how this combined with this ends up with this. It, it I am really impressed. I'm really surprised. Um, I think this is the way I'm going to go for the rest of mine. But, you know, to each his own. Um... Put this over here. And these are also some creations. I don't like how this happened. Um, one thing I want to mention, if you're going to do some weird stuff like this, um, they don't like a lot of type of glues. I use Crazy Glue, Gorilla Glue, um, E6000, and what was the other one? Another type of, of super glue. Um, they would not glue together at all. They would not bond. I even tried using some rapid cure. And it did rapid cure just right on the surface and I could peel it right off. So unfortunately, the only way I found to really get these suckers to um, glue together, if you're going to do some abominations such as this, is with hot glue. Um, I'm not that well versed with hot gluing so we got these little round things going on I guess I'll just paint them gold so that way they look like they were attached by whoever summoned these evil creatures from hell um, and I do apologize I can't remember your name from DM Scotty's page who started the skelepede basically think human centipede with skeletons it, it's it's an awesome build I really like it. I'm going to end up doing one. Um, but yeah. And again, these were primed with this. The Krylon with the Rust-Oleum Primer. Oops. And as you can see, you know, it's they're staying on there. It's not coming off. All right. And these horns are made with uh, some milliput that I had sitting around. Again, and they're not super cleaned up or anything like that. This is for my kids' game. My kids range from 
7 to 11 years old. So it's not that big a deal. Like I said, you're not going to win awards with any of these things. If you do, I'd love to know. Let me know. Please leave it in the comments. So, yeah, I hope this was informative. I hope this helps a lot of people out. Like I said, you know, I got to give credit to Jimbo. James Jimbo Burrell. Alcohol. 48 hours or let it evaporate naturally. Make sure it covers everything. You don't have to be mixing it every minute. Just every once in a while. Whenever you pass by them, shake them around. Make sure they're covered. Let it evaporate naturally. Be sure it's in a ventilated area because it does smell. There, There is definitely an odor in there. It's not toxic, but it might give you a headache. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think. If you guys find any other methods that work for you, you know, let me know. Let us know. That's the great thing about the crafting world. We like to share ideas and help each other out. All right, guys. Have a good one. Have a good evening. Take it easy.